How we doing? This is Fox back again. Uh, today we are going over the final patch from my electro track using only Native Instruments Massive. It's this corded sort of pad sound. It's underlying most of the track. I'll talk about the processing I've got on the master channel quickly. Uh, this instance of Ozone, it's doing nothing except widening the sound. I've got the stereo widener on it. This mid side EQ and it's doing the same, just boosting the side aspects of the sound. When I made the sound originally in this track, uh, I had a reverb and a chorus on it, which I used from within Ableton. But to make it better for you, I've now transferred the reverb and the chorus to the patch itself. Uh, I'll just say quickly, as with all of the other videos, um, there'll be a link in des the description to this track where you can watch me make it from start to finish. Um, this project file is available to download if you want it. You get all these massive patches that I've gone through. You get one, two, three, four, five, four basses, a stab and a chord sound. And all the drums and everything laid out how it is. Uh, it's available to buy for 10 British pounds directly through me via Dropbox. If you're interested, uh, in the description there's uh, the ways you can get hold of me with my email and Twitter. Okay, so yeah, this is the sound anyway. I'll turn the, side, t turn the side chain compression on so you can really get to gist of uh, how it was used. Um, I could probably do that side chain in inside uh, Massive. I'll do it at the end. We'll turn the compressor off for now. Uh, yeah, I'll initialize this and I'll show you how I made the sound. So, oscillator 1 was a square saw wave. I kept it all the way around to a saw wave. I didn't t change the pitch or intensity. I pulled the amp down to about 2 o'clock. So, route it to filter 1. I don't use any filters in this, so you can turn them both off. As long as it's in serial mode. And the mix is to the top. One, just one saw wave, quite brash. Okay, oscillator two is a Flenders one. This is one of the digital hybrid waveforms. Kept this on spectrum mode the same. Intensity of this one, I pulled back to about 11 o'clock and the amp was at about three o'clock. Wave table position about two o'clock. These Flenders ones are nice chordy sort of organy sound in wavetables. I often use them for pads and sort of pumping pads like this. Oscillator 3 is another square saw wave. I pulled this to the middle so it's like a cross between a square and a saw wave. And I pitched this one up one octave. Plus 12 semitones. Intensity at about 11 o'clock. Amp just shy of full about 3 o'clock. Sad in the higher aspects of the sound. Um, I didn't use any modulation oscillator, no noise, no feedback, no insert effects whatsoever. So it was a real straightforward patch. How you get the width is the modulation we're doing the voicing section in a bit. We'll just go to the routing now. As always, if you click on this top B, make sure this orange line runs through and that we go to FX1 first. That's all I always do. Just make sure that it's like that. If, you, if you're trying to make this patch exactly sound like how I did it. So yeah, that's it for the oscillator section. Nothing, nothing else to be done. Um, yeah, we'll go set up master envelope four, which is for the amp. Make sure it looks like this. Level round on full. Um, yeah, the only other thing I did in the voicing section, I gave it a lot of unison voices. I'll crank it up while you can hear me doing it. I got to eleven. <laughs> can't hear what the un new unison voices are doing unless you start to modulate them. Uh, we're going to do that with this pitch cut off, so click it on and we want to push it so we can see just this little line here creeping out the back of this crossfader. I'll push it up slowly so you can hear the effect that it's having. <laughs> What 
this does is um, you can set the boundaries of how far you want this slider to move the new unison voices. The bottom being set at naught, and the, this box is set at one semitone. So this here, it's an, a tiny bit of unison detune. It's what a tenth of a a tenth of a semitone, so ten cents. But because you've got eleven of them, it spreads them out across. It makes it really, really wider. If you go too much, it can get real muddy. <laughs> So yeah, just see that first line creeping out the bottom of the uh, crossfader. I didn't do anything else. I, I sometimes do the pan position, but I didn't on this one. So a real straightforward patch. Um, onto the effects now. As I say, that's it. Real straightforward. So the effects I did was a reverb. I had the dry wet about 10 o'clock. The size just back from its original position. Pushed the colour around a bit so it was quite bright. So this is without. <laughs> Watch that clipping again, massive. Anytime you add anything, it tends to clip, so keep your eye on the master knob. With the reverb. You can dial this to taste, there's probably better like that actually, both dry wet and size about 10 o'clock. Uh, the other effects I used was a chorus, I often use a chorus on a pad. So I had this on the lane, it was an Ableton chorus, but for the sake of this tutorial I've now changed it so you've got it in here. Uh, the dry net wet for the chorus, I had pretty much the same as the reverb in between 9 and 10 o'clock. Rate, offset and depth all out comes as standard, so this is without the chorus. <laughs> And with I'll turn the sog chain compression on again. So yeah, you see this uh, shape we've got going on here. We can recreate this side chain compression with Massive. I'll do this on the fly now. What we're going to do is we're going to use our performer. If we change this first one to a performer, set the cross fade to the bottom one. We're going to load a curve. We want it to look like it did in the bottom of that side chain compression. So this one's going to be the best. We pull this down so we're only using the one repeating over and over. And we're going to use this on all the amps down to zero. This should give us that pumping feel. We need to change the rate now. So I click on the low curve box, we're going to sync it. And we want it one over four, should be. I need to tell it to only repeat that there. Not too sure how we do that. Restarts back on. Let's load this curve in the rest of the boxes. We'll pull the amps down to zero and push them positive. That might give us more of the pumping feel. So push it positive to the route to the position where they were. No, it worked best the other way, so we'll change the curve back again. Push the amps back to where they were and do it negative. 
So all you're doing is you're modulating the volume on and off to give it that pumping feel rather than using a side chain compressor. There you have it. If you did want to do your, your side chain compression within Massive, that is a way of doing it. Just modulating the amp with, with a performer. I prefer to do it with side chain compression because the EQ on the compressor in Ableton is awesome. You can home into the click of the kick and really get that nice pumping feel. There you go anyway, a nice uh, pumping chord pad with uh, Massive. As I said, uh, if you want this project file, you can have it. Get in touch with me. Um, I'll sort it out for you. Um, uh, links in the description to the track where you can watch me make this in full as well. But for now, that is the last one in the series. I'm going to be moving on to uh, the Silent Trance track I did. I didn't do a tutorial of me making that because I took a little bit more time as it was a project that I really wanted to make sure was sound before I let people have it. It's got some really, really special patches in there, a couple of pads and that are awesome. So yeah, I'll be moving on to that next. But for now, that's me done. Uh, check me out on Facebook and Google Plus. It's Sound Design Tutorials. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers.